In this video on transforming functions graphs, we learn about the vertical stretch. Given a function f of x and its curve y equals to f of x, we can stretch this curve in the vertical direction with the transformation y equals to a times f of x, where a is a positive number. Looking at this, we can see that we're dealing with a vertical transformation because the change we're making takes place outside of the function and this number a is multiplying the entire function. Now the vertical stretch is characterized by a scale factor, and I'm just writing that now, scale factor, which is equal to a, and that's the number we're multiplying the function by. And this scale factor is what we'll have to multiply the y-coordinates of our original curve by in order to get the transformed curve. So let's see how that works with a couple of examples. The first example, example one, Consider the transformation y equals to 2 times f of x. Well, looking at this, we can see that we're dealing with a vertical stretch in which the scale factor a is 2. And so to obtain this new curve, all we have to do is multiply the y-coordinate of every single point along this curve by 2. But of course, doing that for every single point isn't possible. Instead, we focus on any key point whose coordinates are known. So let's do that. I'll start with this x-intercept at negative 1, whose coordinates, to be specific, are negative 1, 0. Now, if I multiply the y-coordinate here, which is 0, by the scale factor 2, it stays 0. So this x-intercept won't be changed by the transformation. Next, if I look at the y-intercept here, which is at 3, then its coordinates are 0, 3. And if I multiply the y-coordinate of this point by 2, it turns into 6. So the y-intercept of the transformed curve will be 6, which is up here. I carry on on this curve and I look at the vertex. It has coordinates 1, 4. And so multiplying the y-coordinate 4 by the scale factor 2, it turns into 8. And so the vertex for the transformed curve will be up here with coordinates 1, 8. Finally, moving to the second x-intercept we have here at 3, whose coordinates are 3, 0, if I multiply the y-coordinate 0 by the scale factor 2, it stays 0. So the x-intercept here won't change. And all I have to do now to draw this transformed curve is draw the parabola passing through these points. And that would look something like this. And there we go. That's the curve of y equals to 2 times f of x. Looking at this new curve and comparing it to the original one we had for y equals to f of x, we can see quite clearly that we've stretched the curve in the vertical direction by a scale factor of 2. Notice as well that the x-coordinates of all of the points on this curve have remained unchanged. Indeed, the only thing that's changed in this vertical stretch are the y-coordinates of the points, which have all been multiplied by 2. Now, if ever we're asked to find an expression for this new curve, then all we have to do is multiply f of x, that's the function we have here, by 2. And in fact, I'll quickly do that. This new curve has an equation 2 times, in parentheses, negative x squared plus 2x plus 3. Distributing this 2 across this pair of parentheses leads to y equals to negative 2x squared plus 4x plus 6. And there we go. Okay, now in this first example, the scale factor we used was greater than 1. And now for the second example, let's see what happens when we use a scale factor between 0 and 1. For instance, let's consider the transformation y equals to 1 over 4 times f of x. Now in this case, the scale factor is 1 over 4, or 1 quarter, which I could have written as a decimal as 0 0.25. And to obtain this new curve, we use the same method as we did for the first example. That is, we multiply all the y-coordinates of f of x by the scale factor, so by 1 over 4. Well, first of all, both of the x-intercepts have a y-coordinate of 0, and so when we multiply these y-coordinates by 1 over 4, it won't change anything, and so the x-intercepts will stay right where they are, and that will always be the case. x-intercepts won't be affected by vertical stretches. Next, I consider the vertex. Remember, it has coordinates 1, 4. And so to find its corresponding point on the transformed curve, I multiply the y-coordinate by the scale factor 1 over 4. And so that becomes 4 times 1 over 4, which is 1. 
So the vertex on the transformed curve will be right here with coordinates 1, 1. I carry on and look at the y-intercept, which remember had coordinates 0, 3, and I multiply the y-coordinate 3 by the scale factor 1 over 4. And in doing so, this y-coordinate of 3 turns into 3 over 4, which is 0 0.75, which is right here. And I'll label that 3 over 4. All I have to do now is sketch the parabola passing through these points, which looks something like this. And there we go. That's the curve y equals to 1 quarter, or 1 over 4, times f of x. Notice that in this case, the curve we end up with seems to be vertically compressed when we compare it to y equals to f of x. And we'll always get something similar to that when dealing with vertical stretches with a scale factor between 0 and 1. And once more, if we need to find the expression for this new curve, all we have to do is multiply the original function f of x by the scale factor, 1 over 4. And I'll do that here. This would equal to 1 over 4 times, in parentheses, f of x. So that was negative x squared plus 2x plus 3. Now, distributing this 1 over 4 across the parentheses leads to negative x squared over 4 plus 2x over 4 plus 3 over 4. Finally, simplifying this middle term by getting rid of the common factor of 2, we can state that this new curve has an equation y equals to negative x squared over 4 plus x over 2 plus 3 over 4. And we're done. And there we go. That's what the vertical stretch is all about. Remember, when dealing with vertical stretches, to obtain the new curve from the curve of f of x, all we have to do is multiply all of the y-coordinates we have by the scale factor.